Today's Jummah lecture at Masjid Al Haq, entrance of Lodium, Pretoria, South Africa, is entitled The Importance of Having a Strong Muslim Voice in Parliament. The talk will be delivered by Sheikh Imam, Honorable Sheikh Imam, National Freedom Party Parliamentary Leader member of the National Assembly for the National Freedom Party. He is a global Muslim human rights activist, especially for the oppressed people of Palestine. And he has been recently appointed as the presidential candidate and spokesperson for the First Nation people, which is the same in the point. Jazakallah, Mr. Sheikh Imam. I'm not a Sheikh, I'm not an Imam. That's my surname, so otherwise I would say I have a double barrel and I am entitled to make a lot of ruling, but unfortunately I'm not. Dear brothers and sisters, I'm going to talk about three things today. The one, why we should be part and parcel of the political landscape in this country. Secondly, and very importantly, why we should identify public representatives who are best able to, to act in your interest. And lastly, some of the work that has already been done. But let me start off with the last one. I am the parliamentary leader of the National Freedom Party. As you all are aware, my leader had passed on recently. But we have been very, very vocal on many issues in parliament, on the issue of Palestine particularly. You perhaps have seen some of the billboards. There's a motion that is currently in parliament for the downgrading of the South African Embassy in Israel to a liaison office. And Alhamdulillah, I can say that with all the pressure that we have been putting, there is no South African ambassador in Palestine today. However, we are still in the process, and it is based on the rotation system, almost a turn for the National Freedom Party. So the motion that I have put in there for the downgrading will be coming up soon, and inshallah, with the dua of all our brothers and sisters, we will succeed in approving that and ensuring that we can put in restrictions and bring the Zionist Israeli government to their knees so that they could take us seriously and give to the Palestinian people what is rightfully theirs. We have been very vocal on the issues of the death penalty, calling for it, particularly for serious and violent crimes. We have been very vocal on the issues of prostitution, on the issues of abortion, which we are not accepting to support. But very importantly, I want to talk about why we should be part of the solution rather than sitting back. Now you must agree with me, when you talk about your health, 
Who makes the decisions about the quality of health care in the country? We politicians make. Who decides the price of fuel? We politicians make. Who decides what kind of economy we will have? We politicians decide. Who decides on the safety and security where you live? We politicians decide. Who decides whether your area will be safe or not? We politicians decide. Who decides on your freedom of religion? We politicians decide. Is that not the reason why we should all be part and parcel of the solution and make sure that we should be part of the politics of this country? Now let me give you an ideal example. When you decide you want to go to, you are not well, you decide to go to a specific doctor. When you want to send your child to a school, you send your child to a specific school. Why is that? Because you have confidence that that school and its educators and its principal is going to give the highest quality of education to your child. Why do you go to a specific doctor? Because you have the confidence that that particular doctor is going to treat you well and you're going to get better. Then why not choose the right kind of public representative that is going to go out there to represent you? Because that's where the decisions are made. So that he can protect your and my interest at all times. You know in this country, we have freedom of religion, restricted freedom of religion. You know there have been incidents throughout the country where there's been opposition to the Adam, there's been opposition to the rezoning of sites for massages. We know these things. We know there are those Zionists that are funding people in this South Africa. We know that. You talk about the issue of Palestine, you can look at the number of political parties that have been opposing everything that I say about Palestine in Parliament. So what does it mean? That we as the Ummah must get together and unite. Do what the Somalis did. How they stood up and made their point. That is why today they are a force to be reckoned with. Now I want to say this. I've heard it time and time again, where many of our people are saying, no, we don't want to get into politics, it's a dirty game. You are right, it's dirty. But we have a responsibility to clean it. We have a responsibility to protect the generations that are going to come. It might be okay now, we might have enough resources and we think we're going to survive. But I want to assure you it's getting more and more difficult. Affirmative action, BE policies in the country, all that is impacting on the quality of life that our people are going to live. You know the levels of crime in the country, you know the kidnapping that is taking place in the country, you know the poor quality of education, that 60% dropout in the first year of tertiary education. We know these things. Is that what we want for our children, for our future generation? In a few years' time, we will not be here. But what is going to happen? You can leave a few millions of rents to our children. It's not going to help them. We need them to be part and parcel of the solution. We need to give them direction. And what better way, what better direction can you give them when we have the wisdom, we have the guidance, the Holy Quran, we have the Hadith of our Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we have the way of life, we have everything. We have all the wealth in the world. We have the minerals, we have the oil, we have everything. The only unfortunate thing is this. It's in the control of somebody else. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed us with these things. But today, somebody else is controlling it. Imagine you have the oil. The United States of America, your greatest enemy, is controlling your oil. Why? Look at what is happening in Saudi Arabia. Look in Palestine how you have Muslim countries supporting those that are oppressing our people. We must always remember you can be a lawyer, you can be a doctor, you can be a politician, you can be everything. But before everything you are Muslim. That an injury to one Muslim is to all Muslims.
When you heard one Muslim brother or sister, you heard him before. You read one Muslim sister, you read him before. We need to understand that. We have what it takes to be able to unite and stand together. When we talk about a candidate, you need to look at people that's got the integrity, the passion and commitment. Politics, yes, today is about self-enrichment, power and control. It's about the resources, that's why there's so corrupt, so much corruption. 300 billion rand of our money is being stolen in this country annually. What you hear about the Zondo Commission is nothing, I assure you. Nothing. That's just the tip of the iceberg. You heard the president himself admitting in the Zondo Commission. Yes, they receive money through unlawful means. He decided to keep it because they need it. How can you say I received stolen money and you're keeping it? All political parties, wherever they can sustain themselves to those corrupt means, to those standards, I can tell you. So what do we need? We need a candidate who's clean, who's got integrity, who's passionate, who's not being this because he wants power, who wants control, who wants to enrich himself, but has the interest of the people. Now, I single-handedly identified Muhammad Khawzai. Why did I? Because I follow, I've been engaging with him, deliberating with him, with his commitment, his passion, his integrity. That I have big dreams for him. Why? Because he's the kind of person that we need to lead us. And I want to tell you, I mean, all our homes, we have leaders. We have leaders in our children. I want us to encourage them to be part of the solution. Let us come together. I can assure you that if we today are not going to be part of the solution, our future generations are going to suffer. We owe it to them. We have it all. We've got the Quran. We've got the way of life. We have it all. All we need to do is encourage our young ones, encourage those younger generations. Many years ago, we've had the Islamic movement, the Islamic Medical Association. We had the Muslim youth movement. Recently, you find that they are busy with other things. So my brothers and sisters, I don't want to take much more of your time, but plead with me in the interest of protecting the Ummah, in the interest of giving guidance to this country, taking our wisdom and sharing it with them, in putting people in integrity and passion, let us be part and parcel of that. Let us create a better South Africa. How many of us can leave this country and go? How many of us? A few of us can. What about the rest? This country is ours. We were born here. Let us make this a success. I can tell you that the Ummah in South Africa has so much to offer. We've got some of the greatest scientists who are Muslims. The greatest educators are Muslims. The greatest healthcare practitioners are Muslims. What more do we need? The greatest businessmen are Muslims. We have it all. I plead with you, let's come together. Let us be part of the solution. When you identify a candidate, identify one that is committed, passionate, dedicated, that will not forget, no matter what, I am a Muslim before I am anything else, and I go there with the sole purpose of serving the Ummah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.